かいこの闇の力をダッダッダッ A buzz breaks to silence. I start to rouse, pull into consciousness against my own will. I've never felt this tired before. I just want to sleep. But the in insistent buzzing, poking, and prodding isn't letting me. My old mattress may not be the comfiest of all of places, but that doesn't make me any more eager to wake up. Oh, we're safe. We're safe. It's everyone's here. Five more minutes, Becca. I sweat away at what is nudging persist persistently at my side. Come on, can I just get a few extra minutes of sleep today? I promise I'll work hard once I'm up. A hand lightly taps my cheek, and something cold is suddenly being pressed at the back of my head. Oh, the icy sensation slowly spreads throughout the area, gave me an uncomfortable feeling. Isabella? Isabella? Sounds like a rose. <laughs> the fog immediately lifts from my mind. The moment I recognize the voice and my eyes snap open. There, looking down at me, is Rose. Rosie! Another woman loiters be beside her, but my attention is too focused on my co-agent to even ask why there's someone else with her. Rose's posture just screams of worry, although she's keeping a straight face or trying at least. I can't help but feel bad for making her fret. A wave of dizziness washes over me as soon as I try to get up, forcing me to lie back down again. Luckily, the feeling subsides after a few seconds until only a mild throbbing somewhere at the back of my head remains. With a little assistance from Rose, I push myself upright. She hands me an ice pack and gesture for me to press it, where I suspect a small bump has already formed. It the like egg in the area indicates everything. All right, Isabella, where are we? The Ermengarde Mansion. Why? The Ermengarde Mansion. Ow, my head. And the date today? October 21st? Rose. Last one. Can you count to 15 in reverse order? Why? That's difficult. 15, 14, 13, 12 teen? No. That's wrong. 12 teen? You trying to be funny, Isabella? You trying to be funny with me though, Isabella? I'm asking a real question right now. Huh? Serious question. Why are we doing this? She's just checking if your injury is in any way serious. This time, I curiously regard the woman standing beside Rose. It's possible to over- I mean, it's impossible to overlook her. Of course, it's impossible. Look at her! Beautiful little girl. Not little, little girl, big girl. Beautiful big girl. It's impossible to overlook her. What with the way she towers over her- over us. And here I thought Rose is already tall. So she's taller than Rose, huh? Like Rose like here and she's like uh, oh yeah she's a bit taller who is she anyway one of the remaining cleaning 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 crews this looks like cleaning crews to you looks like someone who goes in the to find some artifacts with all those gloves on but with how primly dressed she is I don't think anyone would want to clean in a suit of course, an expensive suit at least. At at that, the gloves alone must have been cost a fortune. No, it could just be a rubber glove, you know. Her eyes slowly shift between me and Rose, considering us with an all, an almost unreadable expression before finally fixing a sharp gaze on me. I can't help but fold my arms protectively over myself as she does so. She may be far from clean career, but she certainly looked like our supervisor during evaluation. Just do it, please. I eye them both fairly, but recite everything as she has asked. Rose releases a breath of relief once I'm done. <sighs> you scared me for a moment there. I was about to call for an ambulance. Are you alright? 
exasperation soon replaced the dull ache. The memory of a little fuzzy, but the attic and there, there was someone, Rose, in the attic. Someone? You mean a client? Oh, that's unlikely. It, it's probably just one of the cleaning crews. The boss sent a few of them back this morning for some last minute. Oh really, huh? But they didn't clean the attic, huh? No, not any of those. They're, uh, I'm not actually sure. Wait, didn't I call you? You said you were in the attic when you answered. That's why I went there in the first place. Both Rose and Letty look at me like I've just grown another head. <gasps> Is there a ghost behind me? Did I say something weird? Rose quickly casts an apologetic smile at the woman before the awkward silence stretches on further. It's her saleswoman smile. The same one she taught me back when I was still her trainee. Oh, you got a fake smile there, huh? I should show this to trouble some clients or just to avoid trouble in general, she advised. Yeah, I mean like if, if, if somebody tell you a bad joke, you just smile at them. Literally just smile is the only way to get out of any situation. Awkward. Discomfort. Just smile it. Depression. Smile it. Done. <laughs> It's also the same one she gives me when I've done something particularly absurd that may have caused us to lose potential sale. She's like, mm, yeah, that smell, like, how dare you? Her eyes are serious when she turns back to me. I feel so double-sided. She takes both of my shoulders, gently squeezes it, and with as much patience she can muster. As much as I'd love to have gotten at least a heads up of your arrival, I didn't really get a call from you. Really? Rose, you call us. You know, signal here is absolutely horrendous. I was in the garden earlier and couldn't even make a single call. Serious? But Rose, you call us just now, okay? While we are taking a poop in the high school. Isabella, I'm going to ask again. Are you really alright? What happened? Rose, are you fake? Rose, are you faking this right now? I... I don't know. It's all a bit blurry. I remember I was looking for you, but you weren't in the attic. And... and there's... whoever it is. And I must have tripped on a rug or something on the way down. Oh... oh no. Do you think someone came in while you were out? You left the main door open! We are so going to get into big trouble if something gets stolen, Rose! Perhaps it is a concussion. Are you sure you feel fine? We could still call for an ambulance. No, I'm fine. I'm okay, Rose. I can work. Wait, wait, wait. Hold your horses, Rose. I can't just miss an important seal because of a minor bump in the head. An extremely minor bump. I've had, had worse when I was a kid. This is nothing. Besides, if I leave, you'll have to shoulder everything in the open house. Alone. And in a mansion this big? Oh, come on, Isabella. We know that you don't want to miss that extra bonus, yeah? I don't know you want to be part of that bonus, hmm? Well, there's also the part where I may lose that bonus BRC person. See, I knew it. I knew it. I knew she thinks that in her mind. But that's completely besides the point. Are we sure about that? Are we sure about it? Rose gave me a skeptical look when I returned the cold compressed to her hand I mean to her and push myself off the floor. I have to use the staircase railings to steady myself, but otherwise I feel fine. See? I'm A okay. I'm A okay. The two of them exchange a worried glance and Rose assumes a contemplative 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 look contemplative look. I bite my lower lips and anticipation if she says no. Right, you in. A smile threatens to slip out from me. If I see that you aren't feeling well, I'm taking you personally to the nearest clinic to have you checked. Clear? Yes, sir. Clear as day, ma'am. You insisted. But remember what I said. First sign of you looking not okay, and we're off. No questions asked. It's just a small bump. Don't worry. You shouldn't downplay these kinds of things. It could be a serious injury for all we know. <clears throat> Suddenly, a small cough sounds against the wall of the foyer, interrupting our banter. 
The woman is looking expectantly at the two of us, her stare making me shrink back at a little on myself. She isn't really intimidating. Well, she is. But not in the scary negative way. Far from it, actually. Her demeanor sim simply commands an air of sophistication and respect. In a different world, a younger me would probably wish to be like her. <clears throat> uh -huh. At a lack of response, she coughed again, lifting a well-trimmed eyebrow at me in question. Words get caught in my throat at the sight of it, and rose as usual is shift to call to catch my blunders. My sincerest apologies, Mrs. Mrs. Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. <laughs> Miss. Miss McCulloch. Marianne McCulloch. Whoa. Marianne McCulloch. Trailly Rose Design. Is this a legit number though? Is that legit? What's, what's an X mail? Is this supposed to be Gmail? McCullough at gmails.com Or is it like Gmail version of adult? I mean, adult version of Gmail instead of G, it's an X mail. Uh, numbers, okay. She hands Rose her business card. The word interior design catches my eyes before my partner flips it over. Oh, it's Rose design. Oh, yeah, interior design here. Oh, probably someone interested in the mansion for its 17th century influences, then. I won't hold it against her, though. Despite their hearsays and remaining un uninhabited for years, the mansion's original fittings and furniture have been kept completely intact and restored to pristine condition. I suppose some people find that trip to the past fitting appealing? After all, with with what it offers, this place could also be a heaven for people looking to live somewhere with classic historical charm. There you are know, some people just like that kind of place, you know? Like places that look classical and old. Yeah, that is historic feelings. Miss McCullough, I'm Rose Cooper, McCullough. and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We're just ironing out a few things, but we'll be starting the tour soon enough. In the meantime, we've prepared some refreshments for you in the parlor while you're waiting. If you could please. Thanks. There's no need for it, though. I just dropped by for a quick survey of the place. I thought I should check the estate before I meet with the homeowners. Rose's confusion is impossible to miss when she glances at me, and I return it with an equally perplexed look. And against my better judgment, I blurt out the first question that came to mind. I'm sorry, homeowners? I, sh I should have kept my mouth shut. A flash of irritation crosses her face, but it instantly disappears under a mass of professional detachment. Yes, Hannah Wright? She hired me to handle the interior design for their new home? This is the Ermengarde Mansion, right? Yeah, it is. It is, but... She pauses, possibly trying to find the right words to fix the awkward situation without offending someone. Hmm... We'll check with our supervisor. I don't know. Alright, here's, here's the thing, okay? When you're in... We're in your job, okay? Wait, wait, what's that thing? Backlog, what's this? Kill, 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 It... Miss Ricola, yes. It was very bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, Well, it's... It's best you have an answer. But if you don't know, especially in the working field, don't say you don't know. You go with, we'll check with our supervisor because supervisor has the all the answer. Where's the manager? I'll, I'll, I'll talk to my manager. Don't say you don't know, okay? You must never say, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You should just always go with, we'll check with our manager, our supervisor, whoever's in charge, and, and let's see what we can do about it. Boom. Wait, 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 wait. Does that, is that good? Oh, yeah. I think it increased, right? 
I think it increased, yeah. I appreciate it increased. <laughs> Those few moments have given me enough time to clear my head of any nervous nervousness. I mean, nervous nervousness or confusion clouding it. It is, ma'am, but we weren't aware the mansion has already been sold. What do you mean? I almost flinch when she turns her gaze on me, but I stand on my ground. Besides, it isn't like I haven't dealt with awkward situations like this before. I may screw up at times, but that doesn't mean I haven't learned a thing or two in the five years I've worked in the business. The mansion is indeed for sale, ma'am. Today's the open house, in fact. Bruh. However, we haven't heard anything from the higher-ups that a deal has already been closed for this particular property. If you'd like, my co-agent and me can check with them right now. I thought something looked odd. Excuse me, I need to call my secretary. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Santos. Wait, her name is Isabella Santos, right? How do I check? Only Isabella. Oh well. With a slight wave of her hand, she leaves us. That seems to be the end of it. Both Rose and I breathe a sigh of relief. Disaster averted. I also don't miss the thumbs up she gave me for doing a good job, and I can't help but to swell with pride. Yeah, see, see that? You don't say I don't know. You say I'll check with my supervisors or something. Well, why, why not? I'll check with my boss. Still, I've got. I've already prepared myself to dial the number to our Luxborn office and check, even if she didn't ask for it. I will be very frustrated, frustrated, if. For some reason, something has already been decided without my or Rose knowledge. That's a whole new level of unfair. We've been looking hard on this. Moments later, Miss McCullough returns, looking a little frustrated, but with an apology clear in her face. She's blushing right there. I feel a little sorry for her having to go through all this trouble. There seems to have been a little misunderstanding with my client. If you'll allow it, I'd like to stay and wait for them here. Yeah, sure, why not? I was informed they'll be dropping by for the open house today. I figured it'd be a waste to just leave after that long drive. I might as well meet him here. Certainly. You can stay at the parlor in the meantime, ma'am. I'm sure it won't be long before our guests arrive. And, Isabella? I left a few documents in my car. You know where I keep those. Can you please get it for me? Why are you gonna tell me that there's gonna be a ghost inside her car? Rose takes a glance at her wrist watch before tossing me a set of keys. And hurry! We've still got a few minutes to double check those papers. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. I'm gonna get spooked in the car. There's gonna be a ghost dragging me I hit my hand. The two of them disappear behind the parlor's door. Their departure brings with with it a stillness to keep me company. Neither welcoming nor comforting. Alone like this, it's impossible not to think of what really happened. I wish the memory isn't as elusive as it normally is. Then again, Rose already said she didn't receive any call from me. But Rose has called you though. Was it just a paranoia? A temporary lapse after having heard all those tales about this place? Probably. You know... You know what? You could just check your phone, right? You could just check, check for the call log. What's what's the big deal? You could just check if if she called you. She like show her. Hey, look! You called me here on this time. You don't remember? I got proof right here. Why why can't she just say that? I want to think of it as such. Better better to not. I mean, better to think of it as such, so I can work in peace. Except a small part of my mind begs to differ, and if I am going to be completely honest with myself, I want nothing more than to leave this place as soon as possible. 